Welcome to Answers for You Express, Uniform Guidance. This short lesson will introduce you to Uniform Guidance and highlight some of the items that are contained within it. Uniform Guidance provides guidance to federal agencies and recipients in the management of federal grants and cooperative agreements. The official title is Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements for Federal Awards. Everyone just refers to it as Uniform Guidance. It is located in Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations. The purpose of the guidance is to streamline administrative burdens and to strengthen oversight of federal funds to reduce fraud, waste, and abuse. The requirements established in this part apply to federal agencies that make federal awards to non-federal entities. Uniform Guidance is organized into various subparts. Subpart A contains acronyms and definitions and is especially useful in helping one understand grant terminology. Subpart B discusses general provisions. Subpart C covers administrative requirements directed primarily at federal agencies, including pre-award activities and requirements for the contents of federal awards. Subpart D, postal order requirements, include many of the administrative requirements to manage the project from award to close out. Subpart E cost principles including the direct and indirect cost and considerations for selected items of cost. Subpart F lists the audit requirements and the responsibilities of auditees and auditors. Uniform guidance contains appendices 1 through 12. Many of the appendices are concerned with the calculation of indirect cost rates for selected types of entities. This part prescribes instructions and other pre-award matters to be used by federal awarding agencies in the program planning, announcement, application, and award processes. Instructs federal agencies to provide a standard minimum 60-day lead time for recipients to respond to funding opportunity announcements. It standardizes the elements required to be included in the notices of funding opportunities. This subpart states the requirement that the agencies must have a merit review process for application and prescribes that federal agencies must conduct a risk assessment of the recipient prior to making an award. The postal award phase comprises a significant amount of work for the duration of the award, which includes implementing the grant, progress reports, financial reporting, and completing the closeout requirements. Some highlights of this section include the standards for financial management and internal controls. Cost sharing. Cost sharing is a portion of the federal award that is not paid by federal funds or contributions. This section lists the criteria that the items considered for cost sharing must meet. Revision of budget and program plans. Recipients are required to report deviations from project scope or objectives, and in some cases request prior approval from the federal awarding agencies for budget and program plan revisions. Some recipient monitoring and management provides a recipient guidance in making case-by-case -case determinations whether each agreement it makes for the disbursement of federal program funds casts the party receiving the funds in the role of a subrecipient or a contractor provides the pass-through entities the requirements for monitoring the performance of the subawardee, provides requirements for a property system to inventory and track equipment purchased and used on federal award. Close out the federal awarding agency or pass-through entity will close out the federal award when it determines that all applicable administrative actions and all required work of the federal award have been completed by the non-federal entity. This section provides direction to the recipient in submitting no later than 120 calendar days after the end of the period of performance, all financial performance and other reports as required by the terms and conditions of the federal award. The test for allowability of cost under these principles are, they must be reasonable, they must be allocable to the sponsor agreements, they must be given consistent treatment appropriate to the circumstances, they must conform to any limitations or exclusions set forth in these principles or in the sponsor agreement. A cost is reasonable if in its nature and amount it does not exceed that which would be incurred by a prudent person 
under the circumstance prevailing at the time the decision was made to incur the cost. Allocable, the cost or a group of costs must be assignable to the project in a reasonable and realistic proportion that directly benefits a sponsored research award. Consistency, it is essential that each item of cost incurred for the same purpose be treated consistently in like circumstances, either as a direct or an indirect cost, in order to avoid possible double charging of federal awards. This subpart lists selected items of cost and whether they are generally allowable or unallowable, and whether they should be normally considered a direct or an indirect cost. Subpart F, audit requirements, set standards for obtaining consistency and uniformity for the audit of state, local governments, and nonprofit organizations expending federal awards. Organizations that expend 750,000 or more annually in federal awards must have a single audit annually. Appendices 3 through 8 provide criteria for establishing indirect costs for the various types of entities. Appendix 3 applies to institutes of higher education and provides criteria for identifying and computing indirect cost rates. Indirect costs are those that are incurred for a common or joint objectives and therefore cannot be identified readily and specifically with a particular sponsored project. Appendix 9 contains the hospital cost principles as they are separate from those contained in subpart E. We hope that this short video on uniform guidance has given you a better understanding of uniform guidance and what is contained within it.